Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Sheehan, the Policy Manager here at Circle. I'm here to thank you for volunteering at the festival this year and thanking you for working to educate and inspire people to take action. This year's action is focused on Governor Newsom. The campaign action is to save you the salmon and the Delta by letting more water flow all the way to the Golden Gate. I'm going to give you a brief presentation about the problem we are facing, some solutions, and what you can do. But first, a question. Do you know how many miles it takes for a salmon to swim from the Yuba to the Golden Gate? I'm going to give you a hint. It's a distance from below Anglebright Dam to the Golden Gate Bridge. Do you know the answer? It's 110 miles. The problem that we are facing is that our salmon and native fisheries are on the brink of extinction. A key driver in this is the loss of habitat. 80% of salmon's historic habitat is behind rim dams. And on the Yuba, that rim dam is Anglebright, and that's what's pictured here, Anglebright Dam. Anglebright blocks fish passage to the vast majority of the Yuba watershed. There's no way to mitigate for that loss. And without that habitat, salmon need water. In fact, science shows that today, the largest stressor on salmon is lack of water. Unfortunately, much of the water that flows down the Yuba and into the Sacramento River Basin never actually reaches the Golden Gate. I'm going to come back to that point later. First, let's watch where the water flows. The average runoff of the Yuba River is approximately 2.3 million acre feet of water a year. The Yuba then flows into the Feather River, comprising about one third of the flows into the Feather. And then it flows into the Sacramento, where the Yuba makes up about 10% of the Sacramento. According to the Public Policy Institute of California, the Sacramento River Basin accounts for over 30% of our state's water supply. Also on this map, you can see where Anglebright is in relation to the rest of the watershed. First find the black arrow, it's right over the word Yuba. That's right where, about <laughs> where Anglebright is. And you can see that it's blocking the whole upper Yuba, the south, middle, and north. Another problem is that a significant portion of the water that flows down the Yuba into the Sacramento is diverted before it even reaches the Delta. If you follow the water on this map from the Yuba to the Feather and into the Sacramento, you'll see that the water flows to the area of the Bay Delta, but right below are pumps just south of the Delta. Those pumps redirect water for crop irrigation and then they're further diverted by the State Water Project and the Federal Central Valley Project. The pumps provide water for irrigation and municipal needs in the San Francisco Bay Area, San Joaquin Valley, and Southern California. The remaining water makes its way to the Pacific Ocean via the Golden Gate. Our existing water system and regulations prioritize the needs of industrial agriculture and urban growth. So you can see the Delta is the hub of our water projects in the state. Here's a picture of one of the two main pumping plants. In 2021, over 80% of the water from the Sacramento and the San Joaquin River basins never made it into the Delta. And that is the issue. One critical solution is that water needs to go to the Golden Gate. We need to ensure that adequate water flows to the ocean Current regulations don't do that. In fact, in most years, half of the flow going out to the ocean isn't even required. Looking at the slide here, the blue shows how much water is required to flow to the Golden Gate, the minimum amount. That's the blue. The red actually is not required. So without regulatory requirements, that water shown in red is essentially unprotected. If it's not required, it's not protected. Because of this, the Delta is being drained of water by upstream users and these diversions, causing low flows, high salinity, and devastating impacts on Delta communities, Delta farmers and agriculture, tribes and fisheries. 
Without water, there is high salinity that is impacting farmers and drinking water available to Delta communities. And without water, harmful substances like agricultural runoff, selenium, and pollutants harm water quality. This is a picture of toxic, harmful algae blooms in Stockton. This lack of fresh water into the Delta impacts Delta communities, in particular Native American tribes who depend on these waterways for sustenance, fishing, and cultural practices. In addition, the tribe's beneficial uses of the waters are not quantified and are not protected. Finally, the decline of the Delta impacts Yuba salmon. Oftentimes we think about just the Yuba River and the impacts to salmon. But what's important to realize is that salmon need both regions to survive. This is because salmon are anadromous. They begin their life cycle in the freshwater of the Yuba and mature to juvenile smolts. These juveniles then ride the flow of winter storms and spring, that happened in the spring, back downstream to the ocean to mature. Along the way, they're eating as much as possible till they make it to the ocean. Again, after they mature, they will travel back to the river to complete their life cycle and to spawn in the Yuba River. As many of you already know, Yuba salmon populations are declining. Historic numbers show that we had about 300,000 salmon returning to the Yuba watershed, but in 2021, just over 3,000 returned. In addition, commercial fishing was closed in 2023. 97% of this fishery is lost. And this is the reason the state has to look at solutions to this crisis. So here is the solution and our opportunity. The State Water Resources Control Board, pictured here, is in charge of the Bay Delta and our state's water quality. Their mission is to not only restore, but enhance our water resources and drinking water. As such, they are guardians of our water. Their challenge is to balance the beneficial uses of water. It's important to note that nearly every environmental and water quality beneficial use that the board is responsible for is now severely degraded. However, the state board is now considering updates to the Bay Delta plan, the plan that protects our waterways. These updates will decide how much flow gets to the ocean and how much of that flow comes from the Yuba watershed. This is why Circle and our conservation allies are involved in this process. We need to make sure that updates to the plan address these problems. In January, Circle sent a letter to the state board, and now we need to send a letter to Governor Newsom. Key points of the letter include, fresh water flow is critical, that water needs to go through the Delta and out to the Golden Gate, the plan needs to be based on science and watersheds are different. They need to decide how much water is coming from what watershed. And finally, new dams and diversions can't compromise these new flows and safeguards. So now let's talk about the 2024 action and what you'll be doing. First, we're sending a message to Governor Newsom to let salmon swim. We will get 1,000 people at the film festival to sign this letter, and we'll deliver the letter in March or April. Signing the letter means that they're using their camera on their phone to scan the QR code, or they can just visit www.ubaaction.org. You'll ask them to sign the letter, which includes putting their name and email on it. There's also a comment box to add their comments. After they signed, you can give them a sticker showing that they signed. Next, you will ask them to send a message to Governor Newsom. Just ask them if they have a second to do it. We've made these wonderful frames so that people can have a photo booth experience. We'll also have salmon hats for them to wear. You will help them take a picture using their phone and then ask them to post it to Facebook or Instagram. If they write, Dear California Governor, Let Salmon Swim, as I've written here, that tags the governor's office on Facebook. Note, if people don't use the QR code on their phone, they can just take action at yubaaction.org. This picture will be on the table so you can point to it. 
And here's the how to. First of all, it's really important to be an active tabler. That means smile and make eye contact with people who are coming in and engage them. Everyone walking into the venue should get a smile and a question. Here's the question. Hi, have you signed the letter to Newsom asking him to let salmon swim? Then they say yes or no. You can say, great, you can scan this QR code and then add your name and email or just go to youbaction.org and sign. Give them a sticker, explain this is how we know who signed. And then say, can you take a second to take a picture? We're hoping to make a splash on social media. Post your picture to social media and share this letter in your photo. Here's an example. You can point to the picture that will be on the table. Finally, you'll ask them, are you a member? Your donation will be matched during festival weekend. Help save you by salmon and become a circle member. We have some resources at the table for you. First of all, you'll have a map that you can show people what I've shown you on this uh, slideshow. And then we'll also have a binder on the table filled with information. Here's a picture of the table so you can see the different resources that will be there. The only difference is that the poster will be up on an easel and this picture is missing the picture of the salmon frame that you saw previously. You can see the other materials here and you can use those to point to. We'll also have clipboards with a small poster and QR code on it so that you can hand it to people to scan. Any questions? Feel free to shoot me an email. I'm Tracy at yubariver.org. And thank you for taking action. Remember, go practice now and take action. Thanks, everyone.